Sunday night service tonight. We appreciate you being out and say God bless you. Thank you to those of you that are here live and in person. So good to see Dennis and Joanne back. I appreciate them so much and uh, just what a privilege to have them with us and I appreciate that. We, uh, man, it's been a beautiful day. How many people got rain today? People down on the Buckhead side didn't get any rain? Man, it poured. You get rain on your end? Y'all got rain. You didn't get rain, John? I guess Pastor Brooks, you and I were blessed. Y'all get rain? All right, you, they got rain. So it must have been on that end of town, maybe. But anyhow, we got, got, got some pretty good rain. It's calling for a flood watch, but you got to get rain to get a flood watch, right? But anyhow, it looks like uh, we're still watching the storm, and we're still uh, concerned about that and praying about that and just hope that... Uh, I'd like to just see it dissipate, wouldn't you? Just, just, just fizzle out, fizzle out. But uh, it'll probably end up hitting somewhere. But I hope it's not. Hope it's not here. I hate. Is that bad to say that? You know, people say I pray that it doesn't hit here. But if it doesn't hit here, it's going to hit somewhere else. So you know what? We got just one of those things, and we just God's in control. And uh, if we'd worry about that, we'd worry ourselves sick. But God's in control. But anyhow, we appreciate. Appreciate y'all being out. Appreciate those that are online tonight. This is going to be lesson four on distractions tonight. Can you believe that? I never thought we'd go that far when we started on distractions, but we've uh, gone through the month on Sunday night on distractions, and I don't know if we'll finish it up tonight or not, but anyhow, looking forward to that, and uh, just appreciate you being out. Don't forget Tuesday morning at 10, we're meeting out here at uh, for our Tuesday morning Truths Bible study. And we're teaching on Baptist distinctives, which are really biblical distinctives and uh, what makes us different. Christians ought to be different. Amen? Amen. And uh, man, I'm telling you, there ought to be a difference. I was reading through the book of Exodus and talked about when the, the plagues come that God put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And there's a difference and there has to be. So we're teaching about that. I'm having a really good time with that and uh, doing that. And then on Sunday, Wednesday night, uh, we're enjoying our Wednesday night prop night back here in the auditorium at 7 o'clock. Friday night, our TGIFNS service on uh, Facebook Live at 8. You going to do that this week? Can you do that this week? And uh, then next Sunday night, we've got our ordination service for the major, and we're looking forward to that. And don't forget at 5 o'clock, we'll be meeting and greeting. 
and just fellowshipping a little bit, but uh, we appreciate that. But anyhow, we're glad to have you tonight. Hopefully we'll be blessed by being here and we'll get something out of the Word of God and we'll be able to move on in our Christian life and be what God wants us to be. So you ready? Pastor Brooks, you ready? Well, let me go ahead and just get everybody out of their comfort zone and have you stand for a song. And uh, everybody stand up for one song. But uh, standing on the promises, I don't think you can sing this sit down, I don't know, but we, we can try it, but hey, standing on the promises of God. Amen. Aren't you glad we're able to do that? Praise the name of Jesus tonight. Glad we can stand upon him. Nothing else you can stand upon other than God. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Praise God. Standing, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God that cannot fail. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Yes, I'm standing, standing Standing on the promises of God My Savior, standing Standing, I'm standing on the promise, promises I cannot fall. Standing on the promises I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. Resting, resting in my Savior as my all in all. Standing on the promises of God. I'm standing, yes, standing. Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Amen. Well, that was good. You can be seated. Pastor's going to come and share some prayer requests at this All point. Right. Thank you, Pastor Brooks. Standing on the promises. Well, I love that, don't you? Yeah. Amen. If you're going to stand, you got to stand on that. So uh, let me get started up. We've got some birthdays. Major's got a birthday coming up on Tuesday. And a uh, happy early day or two birthday to you. And then Bill and Shirley have their 23rd anniversary. <laughs> what was it? 50. 53. I knew that. I just said, if you remembered. I love aggravating Shirley. I don't know why. I, you know, I guess that's a sign I love you. I like aggravating you so much. And, and uh, Shirley and Bill and I have been friends for a good while, and I just appreciate carrying on with Shirley and love her. She got her hair cut, and I told her if she'd just peel her head off and give it to me, I'd love that. I just love her hair. And, uh, man, I wish mine, I wish mine could do half it that good, but uh, I love you, Miss Shirley. And even though you do want to go north. Just in the summer. All right, all right. We let you go with that. But anyhow, happy anniversary to you guys on Friday. And then we'll continue to pray for our buddy Todd. Todd's back tonight, buddy. I'm glad you're back and hope that everything goes well with you. Continue to pray for Miss Evelyn with all that she's going through with the loss of Phyllis and uh, her sweet husband, Art. And pray for Miss Ruth Crawford. Supposed to be coming home Tuesday from her hip replacement. Uh, was it, I don't know if it was a replacement or surgery. I, I don't know. Surgery? Just surgery. It wasn't replacement. And then uh, Brother Bill talked with Denny Toby today, and Denny and and, uh, and boy, my mind went blank. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. 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 Denny and Sharon not doing well up in Kentucky, and, and we need to remember them. And he talked to little Bobby and Dutch today. Was that today too? So then uh, they're not doing well either. So pray for those folks. Some of our snowbirds, or I don't, or either one of them going to be able to come down. They think don't think so. Isn't that sad? Wow. So pray for them. Pray for Bennett and Ruth as Bennett is recuperating. And if you've seen him, you realize he is doing he is doing good. And hopefully that he'll be able to get. Have they given him a time frame on when he can get out? He goes to the doctor on the twenty seventh, and they'll determine that. Determine on the twenty seventh. 
Okay, so maybe he'll be back before long. So pray for Bennett and Ruth that God will bless them. Also, uh, Barb Nichols has, is having some health issues. And hopefully they're going to get to come, aren't they? She, she, she told me yesterday, she said, Shirley, just have everybody pray for them. And because she said the way I feel right now, I don't feel able to come. So well, now she said on the program Friday night, I'll see you in about six weeks, I think. Barb, if you're listening, and you'll be listening either tonight or tomorrow, get yourself down here. You and Doug, you and Doug Lazarus, get down here. Amen? And then pray for Cheryl Harris. They have some health issues. Savannah Rogers was on the prayer list and got a message today that she got a good report, so we don't have to put her on the prayer list. We th certainly thank God for that. Uh, Julie's dad's got shingles, and uh, pray for him. That, that Man, that, again, that can be terrible. Our, my buddy, Pastor Donnie Bannister, is leaving for the Ukraine tomorrow. And man, that, that ought to be, he ought to have a lot of stories to tell when he gets back. And pray for him. Ten days he'll be gone. Then Carla's grandma fell and hit her head. She's in the hospital. And then her mom and dad, when are they leaving? Tomorrow? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. They're leaving Tuesday and they'll be down. They'll be down. They'll be here for the ordination service and a few other things. We've got something else going on here too, don't we? Somebody else got a birthday coming up here real soon. She thought Grampy forgot that the other day. I can't believe you'd think Grampy forgets your birthday. But anyhow, be celebrating those things. And then Diane's not feeling well again tonight. So we got a lot of people on our main prayer list. Again, if you got prayer requests, send them to the First Lady, Miss Kathy, and, and she gets that taken care of. And we appreciate you doing that. So Major, would you come and pray for us tonight if you would, my, my brother, my son. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. Good Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight with thankful hearts. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Dear Lord, we never want to take for granted the ability to come out and to worship you, Father. Just want to uh, lift up all the prayer requests, dear Lord, all those that were mentioned and any that wasn't mentioned, dear Lord, any that's on our main list and any unspoken requests, dear Lord, ask that you'd reach down, Father, and ask that you'd touch them, dear Lord, and be with them. And if it be your will, dear Lord, we'd ask that you'd heal them. Father, help us for the service tonight, dear Lord. I ask that you would uh, send the Holy Spirit to this place, dear Lord. We welcome you, and we pray, dear Lord, for Dad as he gets ready to bring the message, dear Lord. Pray that you would anoint him and that we would hear you through him, dear Lord. Not just hear him, but we want to hear you, dear Lord. And pray that you would help him to say what you want him to say and help him to refrain from saying what you don't want him to say, Father. And ask that you would uh, be with each and every one of us tonight. I ask that you would uh, be with all those that are here in the building and uh, up at uh, FBC Clo and all the brothers and sisters out there in the 3D Army, dear Lord. Help us to open up our, our hearts and our minds to your word and to receive your word. Lord, we know that you tell us that your word goes out and will not return into you void. And dear Lord, we pray for anybody here that tonight that uh, doesn't know you or anybody that uh, is, uh, is lost or anybody that's backslidden or cold on you, dear Lord, pray that today would be the day that they say yes to Jesus. Lord, we know that's the most important decision ever, Father. And Lord, just want to uh, just want to continue to pray for our nation, dear Lord. We're in bad shape, and we need you, Father. We need we need revival, dear Lord. Pray that help us that we would want revival, dear Lord. I know uh, ask that you'd send revival in my life, dear Lord, in my family, in my church, dear Lord. Help us to be uh, the church that you want us to be for you, to a lost and dying world, dear Lord, that, that needs you. And we have the answer, dear Lord. Help us to to boldly proclaim the gospel, dear Lord. Don't let the devil booger with us, dear Lord, but be able to to go out and be soldiers for you, Father. Nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done. In Jesus' sweet, precious name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. God's people. I'm going to have to, I'm going to borrow that quite a bit. In the, in the Bible, which, which the Bible is great because that's the way God speaks to us. Amen. God talks to us through his word. He's never, he's never talked to me audibly. Uh, I've, I've never seen him physically face to face. Uh, but I do know that he speaks to our spirit uh, through so many various avenues, and especially in his word. You can have a scripture that you may love and read, and it says something to you or speak to you in a real special way, and maybe the very next time you read that same scripture, it's not, it won't change what the scripture means, but it can speak to you in a whole other light, and God can enlighten you through his word, and it's so important. Joshua 1, eight is a verse that says, The book of this law, which is talking about God's word, shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate upon therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then it says, For then thou shalt, it shall make thy way prosperous, 
and thou shalt have good success. And I know, standing here, it's not about us being successful. It's about us being faithful. Because when you you think about terms of success, you have man's terms, and then you have God's terms. And God's terms of success always deal with our faithfulness. How faithful are we? And thinking about God's word tonight, and my, just like Major, and he, he, he prayed that so rightfully, that I don't want to hear Pastor Mike. I want to hear Jesus. And if we can just, and what you've been sharing with us on the broadcast, if we can just grasp God's holy word for what it is about talking about the self-sufficiency of God, we would be way further down the road of success faithfully. This song, I'm going to share a song with you, and it's entitled, The Word of God Speak. And there's a line in this song that says, I finding, I'm finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise. There's so much noise today. And I'm sure if you were to get into some certain Christian circles, it would be like a lot of noise. But I just want to hear God so clear. And uh, may the Lord uh, speak to you, even through this song tonight. I like that word of God speak. More than anything we need to hear today is the word of God. It's alive. It's real. It's truth. 
And man, we need truth for troubled times. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be jumping in tonight in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verse 21, if you want to read along on that verse after a while. Hopefully, I'll get there in a little bit. But as I said a minute ago, this is our fourth lesson on distractions. And we're talking about end time topics. And, you know, we uh, talk 20 some lessons on deception. And now we're on end time distractions. And so many times you can't hear God speak because of distractions and things that go on and things that happen. So we're going to be jumping into lesson number four tonight. Let me get down where I need to be on my notes here. And uh, we'll see where we are, if I can run this. I'm used to running with a mouse, driving with a mouse. That's a mouse on computer terminology. I asked Pastor Brooks not long ago when we started our Tuesday morning truce, I said, is there a mouse in the church? Now, don't say that around Gwen. <laughs> but I said, is there a mouse in the church? I said, you know, isn't it amazing how terminology has changed? I talked about a computer mouse. And uh, he said, yes, there is. So thank goodness there is a mouse in the church mouse in the house amen all right here we are lesson number four on distractions i want to keep saying this to you because i think it's important so that you would remember this i'm not saying it that i have forgotten it but i'm saying it to try to drive the point home week after week if satan can't make you bad he'll make you busy and really doesn't matter to him it really doesn't matter to him what he does. Don't forget this. I think sometimes we forget this and we think we're Satan's buddies or Satan's pals. Mm. Satan hates us. Yes, he, he hates you. He hates me. He hates our families. He hates what we stand for. He hates the Word of God. He hates our church. There's nothing about God or Christ that Satan likes. He hates us. And I think sometimes that we forget that. And if he could, he would destroy us. Thank God that he doesn't have that power. Amen. But I tell you what he will do. I tell you what, even though he can't destroy us, he will seek to make us ineffective in our Christian lives. And Satan has so many tools that he uses. I said we talked about deceptions for so long. And here we are in lesson number four on distractions. Last week we talked about Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore seen, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Then it goes into verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Wow. Think about that. We talked about the weights. There are things that, there are things that, that we get involved in that may not be sin, but they can be a weight. They can be a hindrance. There are things that we know. We talked a lot. I harped on that a lot last week. There's, you know what the sin is that besets you. I may not know. I, I, in fact, I'll be, be real honest with you. I don't want to know. Uh, we don't have a confessional booth set up. Amen. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. Man, just take your shout and fit on that tonight that we don't have a, a confessional booth set up and, and you got to come and look through a little hole and I look back through that little hole and, and you have to tell me all the things that you've done. Woo. Dear lands. Who in the world would want to hear that? It's bad enough sometimes you ask somebody how they're doing. They have to sit and listen to their sins. Well, thank God we have a Savior on high that takes care of that. Thank God that you don't have to confess your sins to any mortal man. You don't have to tell, you don't have to tell the pastor what you've done. You don't have to tell anybody what you've done. That's between you and God and God alone. I love that. I just love that. So you know what your sin is. It gets you in trouble easily. And you say, well, you know, you say, well I, I don't know. I bet you do. I bet you do. I bet you do. It's like I remember was it R.A. Torrey was, used to preach on the prescription for revival. And he said, what we need to do is come gather around the altar and confess our sins. And one highfalutin lady told him, said, well, Dr. Torrey, I don't know what mine are. And he said, well, guess at them. And he said, you know what? She got them right the very first time. 
So you know what it is that gets you in trouble. As I said, Satan's not going to waste time on me with something that's not a problem for me, but it might be a problem for you. So think about that. Tonight we're going to jump in on this verse, Matthew 6, 21. You've heard this verse probably all your life if you've been around church and Christians and, and, and Sunday school. Matthew 6, 21, very familiar verse. For, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. You say, what in the world does that mean? That's talking about worldliness and treasures. And what means a lot to you will be where your heart, your heart will be in it. There are people who say their heart's in church, but it's hard for me to believe that. Hard for me to understand that. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just missing the point. But I believe what the Bible said, what Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. What you love, and let me kind of say it this way, what you love, you will find a way to do it. Yep. It doesn't matter what it is. As I said, I think maybe last week, Daddy, I said, made the bad mistake saying to Daddy, I don't have time to do that. And Daddy said, you have time to do what you want to do. And I, I just love this verse because where your heart, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Look and see if you could, if you could see in people's lives and see what they invest in. That would tell you where their heart is. Am I right? Amen. And I want to say tonight that we have become a society that wants to be amused and entertained. Mm -hmm. The television industry has helped ruin America. Amen. And I will say that I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not bashing TV and I'm not telling you go cut your plugs off your TV and throw them in. It. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that they have made us entertainment minded. We want to be amused. We want to be entertained. We watch, how many of you watch shows on TV that you don't like? I don't, unless Kathy likes them and then I try to endure them, <laughs> you know, just to be a good husband, you know, uh, I, you know, something like that. But I mean, you don't just sit down and spend time watching something that you don't care. You know, I don't like, I, 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 Evelyn, forgive me. I don't watch cooking shows. <laughs> that has, I, have, I have no interest in that. Now, if, you, if I could cook, maybe I ought to watch them, maybe. Maybe it'd help me. I don't watch those shows about putting flowers around the house and all that. You know, I, it doesn't interest me. So everybody's got things that, that interest it in, but I think TV has called us to be a, an amusement and entertainment society. And, and really, it's been detrimental to churches, and it's been detrimental to Christians because we come to church and we come to the Lord with that same mentality. That we come to church to be entertained. Church is not an entertainment place. Can I just say that? If you, if you come to church to be entertained, you've come for the wrong reason. You don't come to be entertained. You come to learn about the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And you, when you think about that with this entertainment and amusement mentality that we have adopted into our lives, unsaved people are just partying and laughing their way right on into hell. Right. Amen. I mean, so it goes back to my thought on the Titanic when the Titanic was going down. People on the, on the bridge laughing and partying and drinking as they plunged into death. And there are people like that today that, as hey, this, my sermon this morning, Jeremiah eight twenty. The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. People just laughing and hee hee and ha ha right on into the pits of hell. That's what Satan wants you to do. But there's another side to that, that Christians are being deceived and distracted while people are perishing. Where's the urgency for the lost? Where is the urgency to get the gospel out? Where is the urgency? You got people in your family, people that you know, that's going to probably, if, if, listen, if they die today, they go to hell. Amen. There should be an urgency that we have. Instead of being deceived and distracted about everything else, listen, I, I just thought about this today as I was looking over my notes. Who's going to stand for this generation? 
There are a few old time preachers left. There are a few good churches left. We're not the only one. We don't have the Elijah syndrome and everybody's gone but me. There are a lot of good people out there. But in our area, in our families, in our homes, who's going to stand for their generation? Who's going to stand for your family? It should be you. It should be you. So the problem with many Christians today is that they don't want to be dedicated. They don't want to be surrendered. They don't want to be separated to the things of God. In fact, I'm going to say this. Many times, Christian people today only want enough of Jesus to make them miserable. You know, a little bit of Jesus can make you, can I say that? Make you miserable? You, try, you know, you get saved and you, you, you're struggling along and, and you know something's happening. You're trying to figure it all out, but you don't continue on. Listen, it's a growth process. Amen. What you don't understand today, just hang on. It, as you continue to grow and go with God, it'll begin to open up to you. Amen. But so many people get frustrated and, and they don't dedicate themselves. They don't listen for the Word of God. They don't hear the Word of God. They don't hear God speak. And, and they, get, they, they, they want to be saved from hell, but they don't want to be separated from the world. So therefore, there's a, there's a great battle that goes on. And I don't know if you've known, I know you know this. I know this, that people that get saved and can't separate from the world and surrender to God, they're miserable. Because there's a battle going on inside of you now. The Holy Spirit's pulling you one way. And the world and the flesh and the devil's pulling you another way. And man, listen, I don't understand why we're living in this day of the Laodicean church age, the last church age before the rapture of the church. And so many people have no desire to be all they can be for God. You know, you know why is it that people don't want to be a good Christian? People say, well, you've done enough. You've read enough. Or you, 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 know, you can back up a little bit. You don't have to be whole hog. You don't have to jump all the way in. Wow. Wonder if I said that to you about your job. Well, you'd get mad. Wonder if I said that to you about your spouse. Well, you don't have to give all. Just give them a little bit. You, know, you, don't, have to, you don't have to surrender it up to them. You don't have to love them unconditionally. And just, just be to them all you need to be. You, you said, well, you're crazy, preacher. But yeah, we're talking about the most important thing in our life is our Christian life, our eternity, our soul, and we settle for less or subpar. People say, well, you know, I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do that. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to be saved from hell. Well, if that's the idea that you have, you're going to be miserable because there's always going to be, there's always a battle. But when you're teetering on that, that edge of it, the devil's going to use every distraction he can to get you away from the church of God. Amen. Can I just say that I preached this morning on every unsaved person is going to stand at the great white throne judgment. Amen. Am I right? Yes. I mean, it's a, it, yes, it's a, great, it's a great white throne judgment. Every Christian is going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. Amen. We're going to be judged. Yes. Do you hear me? From the moment you got saved until you die or the rapture comes, you're going to have to give an account of how you lived for Jesus. Amen. Now, you're not going to be judged for your sins. Thank God those have been taken care of. Jesus Amen. died and paid for those on the cross at Calvary. But you're going to have to answer for the way you've lived, for your service, for your surrender, for your dedication, for your talents, what you've done with Jesus. I wish I could get that point over that, you know, the greatest thing you can do is to serve Jesus. Yeah. I, I, you, you, I don't know how people just, 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 just hang on the edge and just barely hang on. I want to say it's miserable. The best thing to do is go whole hog Amen. and jump yeah. in. Amen. And a hundred years from today, you wish you'd done more for yeah. Jesus. Amen. But the deception of Satan is to distract us from spiritual matters and keep us from devoting our time to godly things and cause us to devote our time to worldly pursuits. I'm going to name some distractions. If I name yours, don't get offended. I'm just naming them. Don't think I'm picking on you. If I don't name yours, stand up and tell us and we'll throw it into the, into the lesson. Think about how much time that we spend on some of these things. And remember, Satan will use anyone or anything 
to distract you away from the things of God. Can I name a little bit? You just think about me. Think about how much time is spent on TV. It's a, it's a time gobbler. Yeah, I, I, listen, I li- I, listen, I like TV. There's things that I like to watch. I'm not beating up TV per se, but if you're not careful, it can rob you of valuable time. Amen. The internet. The internet. Do you know how many people are addicted to this thing right here? You can't drive. You can't walk. You can't go to the store. You can't sit in a room. If we sat here very long and, and, and nothing was going on, we'd all have our phones out looking at them. <laughs> Texting each other across the room. Hey, baby, how you doing over there? I'm talking to my wife, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, the internet. Music. You, listen, people say, well, you know, music, music, all these things can be time gobblers. Movies, Facebook, YouTube, social media, sports, automobiles, shopping, fishing. Hunting, golfing, work, family, friends, acquaintances, leisure. Did I miss any? I need to say. I mean, if I missed yours, like I said, stand. Feel free to stand up and say you didn't get this one. Cooking, Evelyn. I saw Evelyn move. I saw Evelyn move back, and I thought, cooking. Yeah, I mean, listen. It, 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 listen, and these things can be time gobblers. And don't, please, don't misunderstand. There's nothing wrong with these things. There's nothing wrong with those things. But it's when those things have you, Amen. and that's what happens. That's what. The, that's why the devil's so deceptive. He will give you something to, you know, to take the place of Bible reading, to take the place of prayer, to take the place of church attendance, to take the place of being surrendered, to take the place of other things you ought to do godly and just slip you something else in so subtly. And that's when it becomes a problem. What started out, listen to me, and I wish I, I wish you would believe this. What started out as innocent fun has become a compulsion or an addiction. There are people that are addicted to so many things. And I'm not, ta- I'm not talking about drugs, alcohol, sex. And I'm, not, and I'm not even talking about those things. Things that can start out as a simple, fun, leisurely activity. If you're not careful, Satan will keep on until it becomes a compulsion and an addiction. Can I ask you a question? I haven't asked you this in a couple of weeks. I want to ask you again tonight. Personal. Please do not answer it out loud. Do not make any faces. Do not, do, do not look at your neighbor. Keep a straight look. Look at the front of the building. Do not turn to the right or left. Do not let any look like this. I want to ask you a personal question. Do you really take time to read the Bible? You know, we're four weeks into this. I, I would hope that from the first night I ask it, you need to take time to read the Bible. You need to take time to pray. You need a daily dose of the Word of God. Amen. You need a daily quiet time. You need to have a time somewhere throughout the day that you can spend alone with God and, li- and talk to God and listen to God talk to you Amen. through that Bible. Yes. God's not going to talk to you audibly Amen. unless you read the Bible out loud. You say, I want to hear God speak out of it and sit down and get in the corner and read this out loud. This is God's word. Amen. You need a quiet time. A, a, a time that's a, I wish I could say this and, and, and you wouldn't grab a hold of this. That's the reason people struggle. Amen. That's the reason people backslide. Amen. That's the reason people are ineffective. That's the reason people say, oh, I'm having such a hard time in my Christian life. They're not giving time to God. Amen. 
Did you hear the major statistics that he used last Sunday morning? He gave those Bible statistics. I don't know where he got them. He still hasn't shared that with me. <laughs> About people who don't read their Bible at least four times a week. The difference. You say, do you, 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 you're sitting tonight, you're, you're probably saying, Preacher, do you really believe that reading that book is that important? Yes. Amen. Absolutely. Yes. It is spiritual food for your spiritual man. Yes. And if you don't feed that spirit, listen, I'm starved to death about 95% of the time. And you can tell by looking at me, I ain't missed a meal. But man, I, I, you know, we were going home from church today. I said to Kathy, I'm starved to death. <laughs> I, really, I wasn't. I don't know if I've ever really been hungry in my life, but it feels like it. Yep. But you know what? I, it, I believe there's times if we could hear that spiritual man down on the inside, he'd say, be like Jonah, hollering out of the belly of the whale, hey, hey up there, how about sending me down some food? Amen. And man, that's what we need. So you need to be reading about not just four times a week. No. You need to read a little bit every day. According to statistics, if you can believe them, and I believe them, church attendance is at an all-time low. Amen. Bible reading is at an all-time low. You say, have you done a survey? Do you know that? I don't have to, I don't have to take a survey. All I have to do is look at the world Amen. and tell you people are not living for Jesus. Amen? Amen? Look at the condition of America. Look at the condition of our homes. Look at the condition of our churches. Here's the reason that people get in trouble. They can't be consistent serving God. Listen, being saved costs you nothing. Right. Nope. Nothing. Now it cost. It cost God His only Amen. begotten Son. It cost Jesus His life. Right. He paid for it. It cost you nothing to be saved. Nope. But if you're ever going to grow in discipleship, if you're ever going to grow in your Christian life, if you're ever going to be what God wants you to be, it's going to cost you. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, here's, here's, here's where we are in America today. People are not willing to put the time in to be what God wants them to be. I'm going to say this tonight. If it sounds bad, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm going to say it about Pastor Brooks. I'll talk about him. <laughs> Pastor Brooks has spent well nigh 50 years reading and preaching and teaching and living this book. That ought to say something. Yes. That ought to say something. That ought to mean something. Yes. Because you get people that get in church and, and they hit a lick or two and they make a lick or two and they read a verse out of the Bible and they put it down and they say, well, I'm finished. Mm -hmm. I would hate to think, hate to ask how many times Pastor Brooks has probably read that book over and over and over. And as he said a minute ago, every time you read it, you can get something, you can go, wow, yeah. I did not see that the last time I made my journey through there. I'm reading through the Old Testament. As I read through Genesis and Exodus, thinking about the attributes of God, I'm just going, wow. Yeah. God really was in control. Yeah. God knew what he was doing. Yeah. But I'm just going to tell you if, you, don't, if you don't put time into that, people say, how do you preach? You don't just get up and, and open your mouth. When I first started, I come out of a group of people thought, God called you to preach, you just get up, you don't study, you don't do anything, you get up and read your verse and just open your mouth. Well, I've heard a lot of preaching like that. Most of us not, some of us not worth taking to the house. If you're going to feed a church, a congregation of people, you have to, hey Major, I'm putting a charge on you early tonight. You've got to study. You've got to put time in the book. And I'm going to say that the preachers ought to do more reading and praying than anybody. Amen. But I'm concerned that we're not. And I'm not talking about our guys. I'm talking about it as a whole in America that we're not. So people are not consistent. Yeah. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah. Right. How many times have you ever heard this? People say, Pastor, I'm just following my heart. <laughs> well, Jeremiah that I preached from today, Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who 
can know it. If I said this to you tonight, you'd, you'd be offended, but you really don't know your own heart. Your own heart will deceive you. Say, well, then what do I go by? This will not deceive you. People say, oh, you know, Pastor, I've, I've thought about this, I've prayed about this, and, and my heart's leading me this way. You need to be careful about that. Pride will get in your way. Your heart will get in your way. Ambition will get in your way. All these things will get in your way when you need to go by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to follow my heart. Well, you need to be careful about following your heart because your heart's wicked. Right. Desperately wicked. Yes. The Bible has to be the final authority yes. in your Amen. life. I wish I could tell you about the people that I've seen in 45 years almost in the ministry who were shot with the arrow of distraction. That dart of distraction. You know, it's kind of like shooting into, I talked about deer hunting this morning. Boy, kind of got my mind thinking about deer hunting. But, you know, it's kind of like just shooting, shooting into the herd. You know, you just hit something. Hit somebody with that dart, and that's what the devil does. He just looks at you and... And if you're not careful, it'll hit you. And you'll be distracted. And you'll not be where you ought to be with God. They, people were probably, maybe they were saved. They appeared to be. They started off well. They ran well for a little while. You know... What did Paul say to the Galatians? Who hath bewitched you? What happened? You know, then all of a sudden, all of a sudden another activity came along, another thing come along, something caught their attention, and boy, they're just off running after that. They're not fixed, they're not focused with an eye of faith on Jesus Christ. They have no desire for the things of God. They have no desire to put God first. They have no desire to read the Bible. They have no desire to come to the house of God. They have no desire to be around other Christians. Are those people really saved? Or did they get deceived? Maybe they got saved and then they got distracted. You make a conscious choice, a decision that you need to protect your time with God. Thank God I'm retired and now, you know, I, I, it's, I, I can't tell you the freedom, the joy that I have to be able to get up in the morning and spend time in this book. Now, I always was doing it, but man, I was on a time crunch. And I understand people work, man, I understand that. Pastor Brooks, it's a blessing to get up and just, just spend all the time you want in that book. And just go from place to place, man. You just go from here to there. And man, because if you, if you don't protect that time, you say, man, what, what do I need? To, you need to protect your quiet time Amen. with the Lord. Amen. I'm retired. I get up before Kathy. Guess what happens? Can I just tell this? I get my quiet time in. Amen. When she gets up, that's her quiet time. Guess who's not quiet? <laughs> Guess who's finding a struggle to find a place? From, Honey, I'm trying to do my Bible read. I'm trying to do my prayer. I'm trying to do it. I'm, and I'm just ready to go, you know. <laughs> so, you, you know, I, I need to be cautious of that. We need to, we need to protect each other's quiet time. We need to do, do what we can to help that out, amen? amen? Over the years, can I say this and I want to say this. Over the years, that I've seen people get involved in other organizations, clubs, groups, activities that have become a distraction and pulled them out of church. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this now. This is, I don't, I'm not talking about anybody. But if it hits you, you just take it as maybe I need to be hit. I've never had time to get in all these clubs, I don't want to name them because I'll name the wrong one. You'll get mad. But just list them down through there. You say, are they bad? Well, that, you, you get, I, I, don't ask me that right now. But I tell you what I found out. That in, and I've been, in, I've been in it 45 years. I ain't had time to get involved in every civic group and civic organization and civic club that starts up out in the, out in the community. Because I've seen people that seem to be doing good for the Lord and active in church, and all of a sudden, they got involved in this club or that club or this organization, this civic activity, and next thing you know, that became where their treasure is. And that's where their heart will pull you away. You say, that, well, they may be good organization, but they're not spiritual. Amen. They're not spiritual. They're not your church. People say, well, you know, I, I, 
I'm gonna just, can I just go ahead and say this? Man, we're, we're still begging and dying for, we need workers. Freedom Baptist Church needs people that want to get involved and work and help. You say, Kathy told me, Dave, if you don't know what to tell them, send them to me. She's got a whole list of things that could be done. We need people that will be dedicated, surrendered, and want to do things for the Lord. Amen. I, I don't, Pastor, honestly, I'm not beating up on people. I don't know how you can give time to the Lord, to the church, to your family, and then have time to get involved in all these civic organizations. Something, something's lacking on some, some end, amen? Because they take your time, and the next thing you know, next thing you know, you're struggling in your spiritual life because you'll find out they'll start having activities on Wednesday night. They'll start having activities on Sunday morning. They'll be doing things on Wednesday night. They'll be doing things on church when you should be in church. And say, oh, well, then you've got to make a decision. And I don't know why it is that our people always give the Lord the leftovers, it seems like. Wow. I, I don't understand that. I'm going to say this to you tonight. Be careful about distractions. God wants to be number one. Yes. Amen. Now, now listen, that might bother you, but that's Bible. Yes. The first commandment, Exodus 23, Thou shalt have no, no other gods before me. God hadn't changed on that. That's Old Testament, but they breathed in the Old Testament too, by the way. Yes. That hadn't changed. God is a jealous God. Amen. God doesn't want to be second. If you've been listening to those podcasts on the attributes of God, God doesn't deserve to be second. No. He, doesn't deserve, he doesn't deserve to be third, fourth, fifth. He deserves number one spot. Amen. Jesus came along in the New Testament, Matthew 6, You know this verse. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what will happen? All these things will be added to it. Can I, can I tell you this? If you put God for, now this is not health and wealth prosperity. And I don't mean for it to sound like that. But if you put God first. Some way, somehow, God seems to always provide and take care of you. Amen. 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 People run hot and cold on God. That's what's wrong with churches. In That's what's, think what's happened to the church in America since COVID. I was reading some statistics. Of so many people have not even gone. They, they lost their desire. They lost their love. They lost their ambition to go to church. And they have never gone back. been two and three years. I saw a lady the other day, Pastor Brooks and I, I saw a lady the other day coming out of the hospital. I said, hey, I just gave her a big hug. Yeah. Where have you been? Oh, she, I've been working. Oh, come on. We all work. I had a job. You've got jobs. Everybody, other people have had jobs. Really? That you can be out of church for two, three, four, five, six, ten, eight, twenty 10, 8, 20 years? And then I bet you if the preacher would come by and visit and say, how are you doing? You know what you'd say? I'm doing fine. And I think in my mind, if you tell me that, i say, that's the biggest lie I've heard in my life. Yeah. It takes people. Can I tell you something? Here's where I'm struggling today. Here's my struggle today. It takes consistent people to build a church. Amen. It doesn't take, hey, listen, it doesn't take just the pastor. Although he is, a, he is a vital part of the organization, the church body. But the pastor can't do it by himself. Nope. You say, what are you, you know, we've been, we've been begging and pleading. I just keep telling God, God, you've got to send us the right people. You've got to send us people. And then if people get in, they get sick, they, get, they die, they, they do this, they move off. And I just have to tell God, God, it's up to you. The only way we're going to have the church that we need to have for the Lord is if we be consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And quit allowing Satan to distract us and determine that we're going to be all we can be for the Lord. It goes back to being deceived. We've been deceived. If I'd ask you tonight, and I can guarantee if I'd ask you, what's the most important thing in your life? You say, my soul, my Christian life. Man, we don't. We don't live like that. Amen? Amen? They get deceived and they get distracted. 
And then they get defective. There's your good three-point sermon. People get deceived. Then they get distracted. And then they become defective in their Christian life. Satan will use anybody. He'll use me. He'll use you. He'll use anybody to distract you from putting God first. Shouldn't God be first in your life? I'm going to say this tonight. I'm going to say this tonight because I preached on this for probably 40 years. I love sports. I played sports. I love sports. But I can't hardly stand sports sometimes today. Because I've seen good, young, dedicated Christian moms and dads who all of a sudden can't come to Sunday morning church anymore. They can't be out Sunday night. They can't be there on Wednesday night. Because their kid is playing in some sport, some activity, some organization, some club, something out there, and they feel like it's important that they be there more than it is here. I got to tell you tonight, there's nothing more important than bringing your child up in the house of the Lord. I don't care what you say. Do they need that social activity? Sure they do. But they don't need it at the expense of their spiritual training. They ain't getting no spiritual training at school. I've been there. They ain't getting no spiritual training at school. They ain't getting out any, any out there anywhere else. Church is where kids need to be. Those come, those kids. Um, how many times we say those kids come in on Sunday? Morning. Most of these kids that come in back here on Sunday morning, notice they don't have parents with them. They're not brought to church. They're sent to church and thank God that they allow these folks to get them and bring them most of these folks right here that come in these kids it's sad it's sad we need to love them we need I love gathering them up around here I love giving them a chance to all of them. You don't know what they're going to say. Jaden was a man. Jaden was teetering on the edge there this morning. Wasn't he? he teetered on the edge and he said, man, you're the best principal I ever had. I said, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> yeah. But who's going to love them, Pastor Brooks? You said, well, they're, they're loud when they come in. Yeah, they are. They sure are. Well, they're noisy. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're running all over the place. Yep, they sure are. One of them come up and asked me if we had any coffee this morning. I said, no, we ain't got, I don't think we got any coffee made this morning. I, he probably didn't need it anyhow. <laughs> they're just scurrying around. They're here and there. They were over there. A couple of these boys today were struggling, man, over just twisting and turning, flopping like a fish out of water. Let me ask you a question. Would you rather than be here like that? Or would you rather them be out there? Because I can tell you something tonight. If we don't love them and we don't give them some concern and some care and a little loving every now and then, guess what? The world will say, try this. Try this. Have one. It won't hurt you. Man, what a blessing opportunity we have. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you now, with a, with a, I'm saying this with a broken heart. We need people. Amen. We need consistent people that love the Lord. It's determined. That's determined to put God first. Amen. Because if you're not, listen, if you're not, listen, I know. I'm, I'm not, this is not, this is not some theological explanation or discourse I'm giving. This is the bare facts. This is the nuts and bolts of living your Christian life. If you don't, I don't care who you are, me, you, you, anybody else, Satan will distract you and you'll be sitting at the house. You'll look and say, well, it's church time. I didn't realize it was church time. I used to say all the time, people say, you know, uh, did we get up and vote on coming to church this morning? We ain't never voted on coming to church in our life when we were married and raising our kids. We never voted on that. I never got up and asked the kids, y'all want to vote on going to church today? You know what they would have said? Yeah, I want to vote. I want to stay home. I said, get your butt out of the bed. You're going to church. 
material. Where are the parents like that? Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Get them. Listen, and I, I'm, talk, I'm preaching. I'm, I'm preach, people I'm preaching to, these people right here. They got the little and, and Gigi back there, but, you know. I'm glad I, I'm, look, hey, we're getting ready to ordain that guy. I'm glad I drug his rear end to church every chance I had. I'm glad I drug his rear end to church when he didn't like it. I'm glad I drug him when he was probably mad and puffed up about it. It fazed me, it didn't bother me. I just preached right on. He'd be mad, glad, sad, pouting. I don't, and he'd give, a, he'd give a hog's rear end to me. And look at him today. Look at him today. Man, I can't take any credit for that. That's only his mama and God. Man, I beg you, Pastor Brooks, don't, please tell these people, don't be distracted. We settle for less, but God demands our best. Let's stand. We're going to sing, and God bless you tonight. If you have a need, you come to this altar. It's open for you. Online, same thing, wherever you are, God can meet your need. Let's just sing this song, He Touched Me. Oh, He Touched Me. Praise the Lord. Think about how God touched you that day. What the change was in your life. Shackled by a heavy burden. Shackled by a heavy burden. Neath a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Something wonderful happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, think about it. Well, since I met this blessed Savior, and since he cleansed and made me whole. Think about that. Yes, I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while he turns. Floods my soul. Yes, something wonderful happened, and now I know He touched me and made me whole. He touched me. Oh, praise God! He touched me. He touched me. And all the joy that floods my soul. Well, something wonderful happened. And now I know He touched me and made me whole. Close this out, brother. Now remember... Plan for this this week, we'll be meeting on Tuesday here at 10 o'clock, Tuesday morning truth, we'll be meeting Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, right. the doors will be open, right. we will have, it won't cost you anything to sit in here, just come on in, and then Sunday morning, so Friday night, we might as well mention this too, right, yeah. Friday night at 8 o'clock, 
We'll do our T-G-I-N-F-I-N-F-S. I-F-N-S. I'll get it mixed up. We'll get the alphabet to write on that. Next Sunday morning, 1030. If you're in West Virginia, 10 o'clock. And then next Sunday night. Listen. Do yourself the honor of being here next Sunday night. Invite people. There may be people that's never seen an ordaining service. And they need to experience this. So invite people to come to this. I think you'll be blessed. Major, close us out. It's been a great place to be, amen? amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come tonight again. Lord, we thank you for being here, dear Lord. We thank you for the message that we heard tonight. Dear Lord, help us to, to, to put it in our hearts, dear Lord. Help us to apply it to our lives, dear Lord. Help us not to be distracted, Father. Help us to, to put you first, Lord. We know Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Lord, help us to do that. And everything else we know will follow after that, dear Lord, if we can just put you first in our lives. Dear Lord, help us to be consistent Christians, dear Lord, that help us to be consistent for you, Father, so that we can we can be the Christians that you want us to be, Lord, and that we can build the church that you want us to build and so we can reach people, and whether in Okeechobee or whether folks up in West Virginia or all across the United States, wherever we are, dear Lord, help us to reach folks for you where the place that you put us at, dear Lord, and help us just to get the gospel out to a lost and dying world. Lord, help us all get home safely, dear Lord, and bring us all back out again on, uh, on Tuesday morning and then on Wednesday night, Father. And uh, for the rest of the service we got this week that Pastor Brooks just spoke about. Lord, nonetheless, we ask not our will, but that your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. That's where